the gist and the physics. Okay, so we are in chapter four, calculative forces. But we're going to take a little detour here. Um, I want to do some really cool problems, but we're going to have to like visualize what's going on. We can't just make a graph. I mean, we could just make a graph, but don't want to just make a graph. So we're going to have to visualize things. Now, we've been using Python. Now we're going to start using the Python. We're going to really use the full power of visual Python. Um, and so I'm just doing this on the computer. Okay, so the, the cool thing is that we can make 3D objects in Python to visualize stuff. Okay, so here are three, actually I have four. Here's three objects. One is a sphere right there. Here's a box and here's an arrow. And so all of these have different properties and we can look at the properties. Um, I don't really wanna, I guess I should show them to you. Um, you can look at the properties of them, uh, but for, for the in, in brief, I'm gonna show you how to make all three of these things. And then we're gonna make a ball that throws five through the air. It's gonna be awesome. And then maybe I'll do the spring, mass on the spring, which we've already done. That would also be fun uh, in 2D. Yeah, that'd be fun in 2D. Um, so this ball has a, two in very important properties. One is the position, and that's the location of the center of the sphere relative to the origin. It's a vector. And the other important property is the radius. Uh, the third, not as important property, is the color. We can actually change the color of these things. This is just a picture right now, but you can actually, it's, these are 3D objects. The box has also has a position, and its size is a vector because it has X, Y, and Z dimensions. Uh, the arrow has a position, which is the location of the point, the end of this. And then it has another position, uh, property called the axis. The axis is the distance from the vector from here to here. So you can orient that in different ways. Okay, let's look at where you could see this stuff. If you go to glowscript.org um, and you click help, and then I can go over here, choose 3D object, uh, let's do sphere. And it tells you all the parameters of it. So it gives you a basic description of it and stuff like that. So if you can't remember what properties a different thing has, it's all here. Okay. And then there's a whole bunch of built-in objects. Uh, there's a cone, cylinder, uh, ellipsoid, um, a pyramid, a ring. Uh, one thing that I like is the helix. Where'd it go? Box, cylinder, loop switch. Hey, there it is. And this is uh, useful if you want to make like a spring. Um, so it's a spring. Okay, so let's do it. So here are um, some objects I've already made these, in case you can't tell. Um, here is the uh, origin is a sphere right there. And so I have to, in the, the sphere is a built-in function. Okay, actually, let's just start this all, whole thing over. Let's just do this, ball equals sphere, run it. I don't have to put any properties in there. It will assume some default properties. Now, here's the three environment. I can actually zoom in and out, you see? This I, I do with the scroll wheel, uh, and then right click and drag, and you can actually rotate around. You can see here that there is some uh, lighting that you can change, actually, uh, but you don't have to worry about that right now. Uh, so then I can move this position equals vector one one zero and let's give it a radius of 0 0.5 and a color color dot red there it is isn't that cool I have a feeling yeah okay so um, I'm trying to think of other important properties here uh, let's just stop here for a second because yep there's I had an interruption. You can hear the dog party still too, but that's fine. I've decided while while waiting that I'm just going to make a program. Let's just make a ball that moves through the air. Uh, and then we'll make it more complicated using a ball. Okay, so let's start off with this G equals vector. I think I've already done this. Uh, negative 9.8, zero. And then let's say the ball is at the origin. So it's a type of object sphere. It's at the origin. It has a radius of, I'm thinking it's like a, it's like a tennis ball. It's, let's say it has a, a radius of, that's actually kind of big, 10 centimeters. I'm going to go a radius of five centimeters. 
that's five centimeters. Uh, and then let's give it a color of yellow. You know, at this point, it's always nice to run it just to make sure things aren't crazy. Okay, it, the, the scale is going to zoom in to show you the whole thing, uh, unless you turn that off. So it looks big, but it's actually not big. Okay, now we want to set the initial properties for the ball. I want to throw the ball straight up and model the motion of this ball. Um, okay, so I could do things like, uh, you know, momentum equals and so forth. But uh, one of the nice things to do and to keep track of all your variables is to use uh, the object properties. So I can say ball.p equals vector. Actually, let's say, let's say ball.m. Let's say it's a mass of, let's say, 0 0.055, 50 grams. And then I can say ball.p, let's say v0 equals, I throw it up with a speed of 5 meters per second, and at an angle of, no, let's just leave off the angle part now. So ball.p, the momentum, is going to be ball.m times vector 0, v0, 0. So now I, I can just do things like this, print ball.p, and you may think, oh, that's just silly, just call p. But trust me, when you start dealing with more objects, and there's my momentum down there, it does matter. It's going to make things easier. Okay, so there I have my momentum. I need my time. T, stop thinking. DT is 0 0.01. Now I can start the, the animation. We've done stuff like this before. So I'm going to say while, watch this, ball.pos, let me show you this, print ball.pos. That prints, the POS is the location of the ball. That's really important. That is R for the ball, okay? And I can print out ball.pos.y is just the Y coordinate. Say zero. So I can now do while ball.pos.y ball is greater than or equal to zero. Do the following. So this will mean as long as it's above the ground. And I haven't drawn the ground, by the way. Uh, now, rate. So this is going to animate things in some time scale. Now the computer doesn't know what you want to do. So it could just say I'm going to do it as fast as I can, which is usually pretty darn fast. So rate tells it says don't do more than a hundred loops per second. And since I have a time step of 0 0.01, that would make this in real time. Okay, so you can change that and I will in just a second. So the first thing I'm going to do is calculate the force. Force equals ball dot m times g. Update the momentum, ball.p equals ball.p plus f times dt. Update the position, ball.pos. So before I would have said r equals r, but here the dot pos is my position. It is my r vector. Oops, I keep hitting that caps lock. Ball.pos plus ball.p times dt divided by ball.m. And then update time, t plus dt. And let's see if it runs. It may or may not. There. Was that not lovely? Okay, let's do a couple more things. Watch this. Make underscore trail equals true. Run it. Now it leaves a trail. Do you like that? I knew you would. Okay, let's put a ground. Ground equals box. Position equals vector 0, 0, 0. Size equals vector. Uh, let's make it 1 by 0 0.05 by 0.2. And color green. So there's some built-in colors. Green, red, blue, cyan, magenta, black, white. Um, but you can get any color if you want. You just got to play around with it. Uh, I don't want to show you that right now, though. Okay, so that actually looks pretty good, but you'll notice a couple things. Uh, the Let's go change this to a rate of 10. Now I'm going to do 10 calculations per second. So it's going to be in slow motion. And so you'll notice that the ball actually uh, started inside the ground because I didn't have the ball on top of the ground because the center of the box was at zero and the center of the ball was at zero. So it's kind of in the box. So 
that's weird. You also notice down here that the ball goes through the box because it said the last step it was greater than zero, but then it moved until it became less than zero, then it stopped. So you can fix that one. I'm sorry, I hit the mic. That was bad. One way to fix that is to increase the time step and that way. And there, see, it doesn't go, it doesn't go in as much. But the, but the ground's not real, it's just a visual thing, so it doesn't really matter. Okay, now let's go over here and let's do this. Theta equals, let's launch it at a 20 degree angle, 20 times pi divided by 180. So now my, uh, I'm gonna say the momentum is uh, V0 times vector cosine theta sine theta zero. So now I'm launching at an angle. So this this cosine theta is the x component of the initial velocity and the y component is the sine theta. So I'm actually giving it an initial velocity in the uh, thingy. I don't know what I'm saying. Okay, so watch this. Check that out. It actually went. Uh, that's kind of, I'm surprised it did it like that. It's kind of jagged, I'm not sure. But anyway, that is projectile motion and I and it went off, off the ball, off the thing. So um, I need a, a bigger ground, but there, there you go. You see the power, you see the power of visuals. Okay, so I made a box and I made a uh, ball. Let's just do one more thing. Let's change this to uh, 80 degrees. It's kind of up higher. There, that looks better. Okay, now let's also add another object um, G arrow equals the type arrow. The position of this, I want to I want to show the momentum of the ball, uh, and I'm going to put that on the ball. So the position is going to be the ball dot pos, and then the axis is going to be equal to the ball's momentum, and the color. Let's just leave it. The color is white. Now, what I need to do down here is actually update that. I need to every time it moves. Let's just run that. See, the arrow to stay there it didn't move. So I need to, in here, I need to also say G arrow. I, I don't know why I called it G. Let's call it P arrow for momentum. I, I was going to do gravity and I changed my mind. Let's call it P. P arrow dot POS. I need to move the position to every time the ball moves, I need to move the arrow. But I did, but the momentum change, I didn't change the direction. So I need to go over here and say, uh, p arrow dot axis equals ball dot p. And there you go. Now, one more thing. See, you notice that the arrow is displaying in meters, but momentum is, a is not a meter. Okay, so we're just giving it a size. So we might have to make it bigger or smaller sometimes. So one thing we can do up here is to say, uh, P scale, I'm just gonna make a number. Let's just say it's it's two, okay? But you can play around with this as, as you like. So when I make this arrow, I'm gonna say the axis is P scale times, and then I need to do that down here too. P scale times. Now it's gonna be twice as big, but it, it looks a little bit better. So there you go. What do you think about that? And, and you can see that this is useful. Okay, getting a feel for what's going on is indeed useful. Now wait, I'm going to go ahead and skip to the next problem and it's going to be making an object move around a planet and it's going to be awesome and you're going to love it, I promise you. And we'll do that on the next episode of Just Enough Physics. Oh, like the channel, uh, thumbs up the channel, ringy dingy the channel, do all those things. I don't remember what it was, but just do it. You know what to do. Okay.